Welcome to National Open University of Nigeria tutorial. Today we will be giving attention to GST201, Nigerian Peoples and Culture. My name is Dan Asukwo, your instructor. If you are a noun student or from any other universities, this will be very useful for you. Do well to share with others as well as on your study groups. If this is your first time of coming across our videos, why not do well to subscribe, like, comment, and share for other two to benefit? Today we will be discussing the Unit 5 titled The Dynamics of the Evolution of Nigeria as Political Unit Contents 1.0 Introduction 2.0 Objectives 3.0 Main Content 3.1 The British and the Creation of Nigeria 3. 1.1 The Transatlantic Slave Trade 3. 1.2 The Period of Legitimate Commerce 3.2 The Amalgamation Processes 3.2 the 1st of May, 1906, Amalgamation. 3. 2.2. Some Consequences of the Amalgamation. 3.3. Nigerian People and the Colonial Predicament. 3. 3.1. The Nigerian Nationalism. 3. 3.2. Nigerian Independence and the Constitutions. 3. 3.3. Is Nigeria a Vital Political Unit? 4.0. Conclusion. 5.0. Summary. 6.0. Tutor Marked Assignment. 7.0 References Further Reading 1.0 Introduction This study unit intends to introduce you to the dynamics of the evolution of Nigeria as a political unit. It will focus mainly on the different stages Nigeria as a country passed through, especially under the British colonial masters. 2.0 Objectives At the end of this unit, you should be able to State with accuracy when Nigeria as a country became independent sovereign nation and later became a republic. State who the first Europeans to arrive Nigeria. Explain the constitution of the British in the creation of Nigeria. Explain the about the Nigerian nationalism. Identify some major problems left by the colonialists. Explain if Nigeria as a country is a vital political unit. 3.0 Main Content 3.1 the British and the Creation of Nigeria You should know that the British who have often been credited with the creation of Nigeria were not the first Europeans to land in Nigeria. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to arrive Nigeria through Bini Kingdom. According to Hodgkin, the second half of the century, 15th, saw the arrival of the first Europeans in Benin, the Portuguese Rui de Sequeira in 1472 in Iwari's reign and Alfonso de Aviero in 1484 in Ozolua's reign. 3. 1.1. The Transatlantic Slave Trade The transatlantic slave trade was the unfortunate channel that first put the British in contact with Nigeria. The trade got to maturity in the 16th century. For close to three centuries, coastal Nigeria's relations with the British were dominated by the transatlantic slave trade. But in the early decade of the 19th century, the British decided to abolish the transatlantic slave trade. They did so through the operations of the British West African Naval Squadron. You should know that it is tautological to say that the trade was very damaging to Africa in general and Nigeria in particular. 3. 1.2. The Period of Legitimate Commerce After three centuries of shameful slave trade came the so-called Period of Legitimate Commerce. Of course, this was another golden opportunity for the Europeans to get more directly involved in the affairs of the African states. Europeans first introduced the gunboat politics. To them, this was important because some erring African states were threatened with attack and in some cases were actually attacked. It was under the umbrella of such happenings that the British first formally annexed Nigerian territory. In 1861, they took Lagos as a colony, but the bulk of Nigerian territory was occupied in the late 19th century. This happened through dubious treaties that were signed with some Nigerian potentates and through military conquest of states and deportation of their rulers. Despite the resistance of some brave and courageous Nigerians such as Jaja of Opobo, Nana of Itsekiri, Ovonramwen of Benin and Atahiru of Sokoto, they could not stop the British usurpation of their independence and authority. Self-assessment exercise Discuss the relationship between the creation of Nigeria and the British colonial rule. 3.2. The Amalgamation Processes Before the year 1900, all the different parts of Nigeria conquered by the British were still under their original administration. 
but by 1900 the whole Nigeria was under the responsibility of the British Colonial Office, 3.2, the 1st of May 1906 amalgamation. The May 1906 amalgamation is known as the first ever amalgamation of the British in Nigeria. British government amalgamated Lagos Colony and Protectorate with the Protectorate of Southern Nigeria to form the new colony and Protectorate of Southern Nigeria. You should know that since the whole Nigeria was under the responsibility of the British government, they did not bother to seek the views of Nigerians in the two territories as to whether or not they supported the amalgamation. Besides, Tamuno, 1980, observes that the primary aim of the 1906 amalgamation was purely economic, that is, to use the better financial position of the Protectorate of Southern Nigerian to cover the costs of administration and development in the financially weak colony and Protectorate of Lagos, then saddled with the white elephant of a railway in need of extension since 1901. 3.2 the 2nd of January, 1914 amalgamation. The second amalgamation was that of 1914. In January, 1914, the British government amalgamated northern and southern Nigeria. The principal reason for this is the same as that of May, 1906. The northern protectorate was not as economically buoyant as the colony and protectorate of southern Nigeria. That was why, for the British imperial offices, since the southern trade was booming, Amalgamation would allow the surpluses acquired in the South to be used in the North, and this was expected to reduce British Treasury responsibility. Sir Frederick Lugard, later became Lord, is best known as the father of the January 1914 amalgamation. 3. 2.3. Some Consequences of the Amalgamation it can be argued that even if the initial intention of the amalgamation process was to make of Nigeria a political unit, it did practically fail. According to Hatch, 1970, the amalgamation of Nigeria was carried out with many unanswered questions such as, what would be the effect of uniting the Fulani Emirates with their comparatively static traditionalist outlook, with the thrusting, competitive, individualistic society of the South now acquiring knowledge from a growing number of mission schools which were making available an expanding clerical class? How would societies that only a few years earlier had been rival and often hostile states live together under one administration? Should they form a single nation? If so, how could a single allegiance be created? In any case, what was the central objective of British policy? Was it to build an empire permanently subordinate to Britain, to act as a trustee for some shadowy African future, or to encourage a natural spirit leading to ultimate self-government? P. 55. Today, it is obvious that the tragedy of Nigeria's history and its people is not so much to be found in the diversity of these groups that were brought together under amalgamation. Rather, the real tragedy is that British colonial policy in Nigeria after amalgamation tended to be divisive and isolationist in terms of keeping the peoples of the two main protectorates separate. For instance, while the 1914 amalgamation gave the northern and southern provinces a common political head in the person of Lugard, no uniform style of administration developed in either group of provinces. Despite the amalgamation of 1914, Nigeria still operated as a federation of two groups of provinces between 1914 and 1939. Later on April 1, 1939, the British government split the former southern provinces into eastern and western provinces. This tripartite division of Nigeria remained well into the independence period until 1963 when the Midwestern region was created and the northern region was split for the first time in 1967. Self-Assessment Exercise what role did the amalgamations play in the evolution of Nigeria as a political unit? 3.3 Nigerian peoples and the colonial predicament. You should always remember that colonial rule was forcibly imposed on the people of Nigeria. As stated earlier, colonial intention has never been for the benefit of Nigerian people. It was exploitative and this engendered protests from prominent Nigerians. The pursuit of economic goals was their catalyst. The British were busy looking for cheap raw materials and creating markets for the sale of their finished products. In doing that, their objectives became clear. 
they pursued policies which in their entire ramification were geared towards the economic, political and social benefits of the British overlords. 3. 3.1. The Nigerian Nationalism It is obvious that the British colonial rule alienated Nigerians at different levels. Nigerians became foreigners in their own country. For instance, it became very difficult, if not impossible, for them to effectively participate in both the economic and governmental processes of their own country. The immediate result to such unfortunate situation was the birth of Nigerian nationalism. Like in other parts of Africa, some brave Nigerians stood up and decided to champion the cause for reforms in the system. The Nigerian nationalism was welcome both in the country and abroad. Three major trends characterized the strength of nationalistic spirit. A. The people's protest against the colonial system in their desire to alter the existing colonial system so that they could benefit from it. B. The activities of black diasporas in the New World, the Americas, such as Marcus J. Garvey and Wilmot Blyden, who were exponents of the dignity of the African person, and 3. The presence of an articulate class of Nigerian elites who, through their acquisition of Western education, were in the vanguard of those agitating for change in the status quo. The West African pilot and Garvey's The Negro World. These are the most prominent newspapers that contributed seriously to the emergence of Nigerian nationalism. Besides, some other factors also contributed to the Nigerian nationalism. The development of political parties and the election of the Labour Party in Britain with its anti-colonialism agenda. Nigeria became independent on October 1, 1960. The Nigerian Youth Movement, NYM. This movement is best known as the first true nationalist organization that emerged in Nigeria in 1936. It was headed by Samuel Akinsanya, H.O. Davies, Ernest Ikoli, and Dr. J.C. Vaughan. Dr. Namdi Azikiwe and Chief Obafemi Awolowo later joined the movement in 1937, the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons. This movement was created on the 26th of August, 1944. It was headed by Herbert Macaulay as president and Dr. Namdi Azikiwe as its secretary. In 1945, the movement made one of its aims very clear. To achieve internal self-government for Nigeria, whereby the people of Nigeria and the Cameroons under British mandate shall exercise executive, legislative and judicial power. The Igbo domination within the party brought in a feeling of resentment. The true nationalist spirit started giving way to tribal interest. On this note, the Action Group, AG, was founded in 1948 by Obafemi Awolowo to defend the interest of the Yoruba. A year later, 1949, the Northern People's Congress, NPC, was formed by Malam Aminu Kano and Malam Abubakar Tafawa Balewa to defend the interests of the Northerners. There is no doubt that the establishment of these tribal-oriented political organizations turned out to be strong centrifugal forces against Nigerian unity. According to Olusanya, 1980-568, with the formation of the AG and the NPC, ethnic nationalism and regional divisions triumphed over the forces of unity in Nigerian politics. 3. 3.2 Nigerian Independence and Constitutions The final declaration of the Nigerian independence on October 1, 1960 was also the result of the major constitutions, namely the Richards Constitution of 1946 the McPherson Constitution of 1951, and the Littleton Constitution of 1954, the 1954 Constitution. The McPherson Constitution was the most comprehensive and did not live long. The need for its revision became necessary. The revision led to the promulgation of the Littleton Constitution of 1954 that remains the cornerstone of the Nigerian Constitution till date. The 1954 Constitution established a federal system of government for Nigeria. It is also believed that the 1954 Constitution marked the end of nationalist struggle for independence. You should also remember that even when Nigeria attained her independence, there were still deep fissures within the structure. Ethnicism and tribalism were the most prominent, along with the feeling of marginalization by minority groups in different areas. Three. 3.3 Is Nigeria a Vital Political Unit? 
Bearing the socio-historical evolution of Nigeria in mind, the question whether Nigeria is a real political unit cannot receive a complete no or yes answer. The answer will depend on the person's angle of analysis. For some scholars, the Federation of Nigeria is a mistake. They argue that Nigeria is a conglomerate of various ethnic groups, and during the pre-colonial period, those ethnic groups never interrelated, so it was futile to put such people together. Therefore, the unity of Nigeria is just a mere concept or a slogan. Although there are some elements of truth in this thesis, some scholars still argue the opposite. According to Ikeme, 1985, and Ajayi and Alagoa, 1980 Nigeria, can be seen as a real political unit. They argue that there were fruitful intergroup relations between the people of Nigeria before colonial rule. They also argue that the common experience of colonial rule by the peoples of Nigeria provided good grounds for building a nation. This was also the case with the British 13 America colonies that later formed the United States of America with their Declaration of Independence in 1776. Self-assessment exercise. Nigeria is not a vital political unit. Discuss. 4.0 Conclusion. This study dealt with the socio-historical analysis of the evolution of Nigeria as a political unit. We have seen how the dynamics of such evolution passed through different stages, mostly engineered by British colonial masters. 5.0 Summary In this study unit I introduced you to the knowledge of the different stages of the evolution of Nigeria as a political unit. Therefore, at the end of this unit you are expected to mention the first Europeans to arrive Nigeria, state the contribution of the British in the creation of Nigeria, Explain about the different amalgamations that occurred in Nigeria. Explain about the Nigerian nationalism. Identify some unanswered questions left by the colonialists. State if Nigeria is a vital political unit, etc. 6.0 Tudor Marked Assignment 1. Use your own words to discuss the evolution of Nigeria as a political unit. 2. Is Nigeria a vital political unit?